Hello, in this video we're going to find consumer surplus, producer surplus, and the deadweight loss under monopoly and then under perfect competition. A monopoly has a demand given by the following equation and its production cost is given by this equation. At the profit maximizing price and quantity we want to solve for the monopolist consumer surplus, producer surplus, and deadweight loss. We're going to do this in steps. Step one, we're going to solve the demand equation for price. We're going to get the inverse demand, as it's sometimes called. So we're going to take this equation up here and solve for P, adding one half P to both sides, subtracting Q from both sides, and now multiplying through by two. 2 times 16 is 32, and then 2 times negative Q is just minus 2Q, and we have our inverse market demand. Step 2 is to get marginal revenue, and we're going to do the shortcut method here. If the price equation is given by P equals A minus BQ, marginal revenue will equal A minus 2 times BQ. So in our example, A is 32, and B from the price equation is minus 2. So just following this shortcut method, this is what marginal revenue will look like. And it simplifies down to 32 minus 4Q. So marginal revenue will look like the inverse market demand with a slope that is twice as steep. Step 3 is to solve for marginal cost. Here's our cost equation that we started this problem with. We're going to take the derivative of it with respect to Q. So the derivative of 4 is 0, the derivative of 2q is 2, and the derivative of q squared is just 2q. Now we can do profit maximization by setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. Our marginal revenue equation that we found using the shortcut method was 32 minus 4q. Setting that equal to marginal cost, we got one equation and one unknown. We're going to solve for q. Adding 4q to both sides, we get 6q, and then subtracting 2 from both sides. And now finally dividing through by 6, the profit maximizing output is for this monopolist to produce 5 units. And to get the profit maximizing price, we're going to plug this q equals 5 into the inverse market demand, which was 32 minus 2q. And where we have q, we're plugging now in the 5, the profit maximizing output and we get a profit maximizing price of $22 per unit. And so now we're going to graph the demand curve. So we're going to graph the demand curve and marginal revenue curve. Here is our demand curve, 32 minus 2q. We're going to get two intercepts, the vertical intercept. So the vertical intercept occurs where q equals 0. So if q equals 0, we plug 0 in for Q and solve, and we see that P equals 32. So that's going to be one point on the demand curve, this vertical intercept. And what we want to get next is the horizontal intercept. Where does the demand curve touch the quantity axis or the horizontal axis? And that occurs when P equals 0. So if P equals 0, we set this equation on top here, set P equal to 0, and we get 0 equals 32 minus 2Q. And now we're going to solve that for Q. So moving some things around and dividing through by 2, we get a horizontal intercept of 16. And so we're just going to connect those two points, the vertical intercept and the horizontal intercept. Draw a line between those two points, and you have the demand curve. To get the marginal revenue curve, here's our marginal revenue equation. The vertical intercept will be the same as the demand curve. So if Q is 0, marginal revenue will be 32, just like our demand curve. And to get the horizontal intercept, we're just going to set marginal revenue equal to 0. So 0 equals 32 minus 4q, and now solving for q. Dividing through by 4, q equals 8. So marginal revenue here touches a horizontal axis at 8, where the demand curve touches it at 16. And a property of marginal revenue is that marginal revenue will intersect the quantity axis halfway between the origin and where the demand curve intersects the horizontal axis. Okay, the next step is to plot our profit maximizing price and quantity. 
So the profit maximizing price we found was $22 and the profit maximizing quantity was five. So just plotting that, uh, that point. So now in step seven, let's graph the marginal cost curve. The marginal cost curve we found equals two plus two Q. The vertical intercept, if Q is zero, marginal cost equals two. So that is our uh, vertical intercept right there. Um, at Q equals five, the profit maximizing output, notice that marginal cost equals $12. So the marginal cost where it intersects marginal revenue will occur at $12. So I'm going to note that point right here. So again, just evaluating the marginal cost equation at Q equals five. And then the demand curve intersects a marginal cost curve. So what we would do, want to find next is where this marginal cost curve intersects the demand curve. And to do that, that's basically where price equals marginal cost. The price equation is 32 minus 2Q, and marginal cost is 2 plus 2Q. And we're just going to solve this for Q. So subtracting 2 from both sides and adding 2Q to both sides, and now dividing through by 4, that occurs at 7.5 units. Okay, and if we were to plug the 7.5 units back into the demand curve, we'd see that the, the price here would be $17. We'll do that also later in the video. All right, let's move on. Let's solve for consumer surplus under the monopoly. The consumer surplus is going to be the area of this blue triangle. It's going to be the area between the height of the demand curve, which is the maximum willingness to pay, and the price that consumers pay under the monopoly, $22, up to the last unit purchased, which is the fifth unit. An area of a triangle is going to be given by one-half base times the height, base of the triangle times the height of the triangle. So putting in our calculations here, we can calculate the base as 32 minus 22. And we can calculate the height of this triangle as 5 minus 0. And doing the math here, we get a consumer surplus of $25 under Monopoly. Now let's look at producer surplus under Monopoly. It's going to equal two areas, this gold area, a rectangle area, and this blue area, which is another triangle. So the gold area is a rectangle, and the area of a rectangle is width times length. So 22 minus 12, okay, is going to be the width, and 5 minus 0, or just 5, is the length. So the area of this rectangle is going to be $50. This is a 10 by 5 rectangle. And the blue area, once again, is a triangle, so we're going to use 1 half base times height to calculate that area. And putting in the calculations, 12 minus 2 is one dimension of the triangle. And then 5 minus 0 is the other dimension. And that will simplify to $25. So adding our two areas together, the gold area plus the blue area, producer surplus under, mono under the monopolist is $75. Now let's move on to the dead weight loss. The dead weight loss is going to be a triangle. It's going to be the area of this blue triangle. The units in, these tri in this triangle, uh, the consumers are willing to pay more for these units than the marginal cost of producing those units, but they're not being produced, even though, again, these units will provide more benefits and costs. So that's going to be the dead weight loss. So area of a triangle, get the dimensions of this triangle, 22 minus 12 is one dimension, and the other dimension here is going to be 7.5 minus 5, so the base of this triangle, and we get an answer here of $12.50. So the area of this triangle is $12.50. Okay, moving on to now perfect competition. We want to solve for consumer and producer surplus under perfect competition. Under perfect competition, price equals marginal cost. So we're going to set the price equation equal to marginal cost. And we already found this before, but we'll just do it again. We found that where the marginal cost curve intersects the demand curve, that occurs at 7.5 units. And now to get the price, we take that 7.5 units and plug it into the demand curve. 
and we get a price of $17. So when we're calculating consumer and producer surplus under perfect competition, it's going to be based on the fact that consumers are paying $17. Producers are receiving $17, and 7.5 units are being bought and sold. So consumer surplus is going to be the area of this big triangle here that I'm going to outline with my mouse. Okay, going to be 32 minus 17 is going to be one dimension. And the other dimension is going to just be 7.5 units. And we see that consumer surplus equals $56.25 here under perfect competition. As for producer surplus, it's another triangle given by this $17 is the price between the marginal cost curve all the way up to the 7.5 units and the dimensions of this triangle 17 minus 2 and the other dimension here is just going to be the same 7.5 and we get producer surplus of $56.25. So bringing everything together then, total surplus under perfect competition, consumer surplus plus producer surplus is $112.50. Total surplus under monopoly, $25 of consumer surplus plus $75 of producer surplus gives us $100 of total surplus under monopoly. And we can back into the deadweight loss. Another way of backing into the deadweight loss is going to be the difference between total surplus under perfect competition and monopoly. And that's $12.50. All right, that's my video.